Hello my dear children. Today we are moving to the next lesson household circuits. As we all know electric power is generated at power generating station which are located very far away from the residential areas and then it is transferred to the city substation for the consumption. In the first topic we are going to learn about the transmission of power from generating station to the consumers. In power generating station, the current is produced at a power of 44 kilovolt. 44 kilovolt means it is 44,000 volts. We all know power is a product of voltage and current, hence we can generate current of any desired voltage it can be 22 kilovolt and 2 ampere so 22 into 2 is 44 44 kilowatts or it can be 11 kilovolt and 4 ampere or it can be 1 kilovolt and 44 ampere we can choose any voltage. Here, we select the voltage of 11 kV and 4 ampere for the generating station. That means electric power is generated at 11 kV. It is because the generation at the voltage higher than 11 kV causes insulation difficulties. But the generation of voltage lower than that causes a high current and high current produces more heating effect and hence it may cause firing. We are generating alternating current because a DC voltage cannot be stepped up or stepped down using a transformer. So for our convenience, we are generating alternating current. This alternating current generated at the power station is sent to grid substation first. This grid substations are very nearer to the generating station and at the grid substation the voltage is stepped up from 11 kV to 132 kV for reducing the energy loss. From the grid substation this AC voltage of 132 kV is transmitted to main substation which are located very far away from the grid substation. At the main substation the power is stepped down from 132 kV to 33 kV and it is sent to heavy industries. So heavy industries uses 33 kilovolt current and from there that means from the main substation this current is also sent to intermediate substation and at the intermediate substation again it stepped down to 11 kV and it also sent to small scale industries and to city substation. City substations are the places where we got electricity but a current of voltage 11 kV cannot be withstand by our appliances. So at city substation this 11 kV is again reduced to 220 volt and sent to house consumers. This is how the power generated at the generating station is reaches to our house. Now let's look how power is distributed to our house. To supply electric power to the house from the city substation, either overhead cables or underground cables are used. This cables consist of three wires, live wire, neutral wire and earth wire. Live wire is also called phase wire which carries current from source to the distribution board while neutral wire is for return of current back to the source. 
Earth wire is used as a safety measure which safeguard our appliance and also house from short circuiting. Since live wire carries current, live wire connects to the high voltage of the city substation. That means live wire is directly connected to 220 volt supply in the city substation. Neutral wire gives a return path and hence neutral wire has zero volt potential. Earth wire is also having zero volt potential since live and earth is connected to the same terminal in the city substation. So in the city substation, live is connected to the high voltage and earth and neutral together connected to zero volt. The power distribution to a house starts from the distribution board. Before connecting the cable from pole to the meter in the house, a high rated fuse is connected to the live wire. This fuse is called company fuse. Only person of the electric supply company are authorized to handle it. The rating of this fuse depends on the connection which is to be taken. Usually in houses, the fuse of rating 50 ampere is used. After the company fuse, the cable is connected to a kilowatt hour meter which is usually mounted on the walls of the house. From the meter, the connections are made to main switch. This main switch is a double pole switch. A double pole switch means it disconnects both live and neutral wire simultaneously. Since main switch disconnects live and neutral wire simultaneously, it provides an extra safety while we are doing maintenance in our house. From here, the wires go to the different parts of the house. Now the earth wire from the station is connected to the metallic part of our whatever meter and then which is locally earth in our compound. From here, the earth wire runs to the whole part of the house. Nowadays, a customer unit is connected after kilowatt hour meter and this unit contains a double pole switch or MCB for each circuit in the house. Now, let's look in detail about some essential components for the house wiring system. The first one is fuse. Fuse is a safety device in an electric circuit and it is used to limit the current in the circuit. It is the weakest point in the electric circuit which melts and breaks the circuit if there is any short circuiting in the electric circuit or when the circuit gets overloaded due to large withdrawal of current. A fuse wire is made up of an alloy of tin and lead. This alloy has low melting point and high resistance. Due to the high resistance, if the current exceeds the limit, the fuse wire get heated and due to low melting point, it melts and breaks the circuit. This is how a fuse wire safeguards the house. A copper wire is unsuitable for use as a fuse wire because it has low resistance and high melting point. Now, a fuse wire is always connected to the live wire of the circuit because when fuse wire is connected to live wire, if there is any short circuiting, the fuse melts and breaks the circuit and the appliance will be neutral. So, the person touching on it will not get shock. But if the fuse wire is connected to the neutral wire, when current exceeds the limit, the fuse melts and breaks the circuit even though the appliance still be connected to the high voltage live wire and hence when a person touch on it, 
the circuit gets completed and the person gets a fatal shock a fuse wire permits the flow of current up to a limit this limit is called current rating the current rating depends on the thickness of the fuse wire the current rating of a fuse is equal to the total power of the appliance in the circuit divided by voltage of the supply a fuse in the circuit will have a current rating slightly higher than the maximum current which the circuit can tolerate some of the electric appliances nowadays are very expensive and very sensitive to electric voltage fluctuation if current exceeds in such appliances they may burn to protect those appliances we use cartridge fuses they are a fixed value depending upon the tolerance current and are fixed with in the body of the appliance next is mcb mcb stands for miniature circuit breaker nowadays instead of fuse we use miniature circuit breaker in each individual circuits it works on the principle of magnetic effect of current if due to short circuiting heavy current flows through the circuit then it fall down and switch off the circuit for a short interval of time after repairing the fault in the circuit the mcb can then rise up thus the use of mcb is more convenient than a fuse because it's avoid the inconvenience of connecting a new fuse wire and also it has a quick response next device is switch switch is an on or off device it can be classified as two a single pole switch and a double pole switch a switch used in an appliance to start or stop the flow of current and it is called single pole switch that means a single pole switch disconnects the live wire hence a switch is connected to live wire in the circuit hence when we switch off it disconnects the high potential live wire and hence the appliance stops its working if the switch is connected to the neutral wire also the appliance stops it working in off mode of the switch since it incompletes the return path of the current but if any person touching on the appliance get a fatal shock since the appliance is still be connected with a high voltage live wire so for the proper functioning of the switch the switch should be connected to the live wire the next type of switch is a double pole switch a double pole switch disconnects both live and neutral wire main switch is an example of a double pole switch since it disconnects both live and neutral wires dual control switch used in a staircase is an example for double pole switch let's go in detail about the working of a dual control switch Dual control switch is a double pole switch of special kind which is generally used one at the top and other at the bottom of a staircase. The connections of a dual control switch is as shown in figure. It is operated in two ways. By shifting the knob of the switch to right that is up. Hence the live wire connected at the terminal b makes in contact with the terminal a so so the connection gets completed and the current flows in the second method we can shift the knob to the left that is down hence the terminal b makes in contact with the terminal c so as to make the connection bc so here one bulb can be operated using two switches in a staircase while going up a person puts on the light by operating the first switch so that 
the connection changes and makes the current flow in the circuit on reaching at the top he operates the switch 2 to put off the light so that the connection changes and the current flow stops another safety measure we used in our house is earthing earthing is of two types local earthing and earthing for the appliance for local earthing a hole nearly 2 to 3 meter deep is dug in the ground a copper rod covered by a hollow insulating pipe is inserted in the hole and a thick copper plate of dimension 50 into 50 centimeter is welded at the lower end of the copper rod this copper rod is then buried in the ground and the copper plate is surrounded by a mixture of charcoal and salt the mixture of charcoal and salt make a good contact between the plate and the earth to keep the ground damp water is poured through the pipe from time to time water forms a conducting layer between the plate and the ground hence proper conduction takes place if due to some reason such as short circuiting an excessive current flows through the line wire it will pass to earth through the earth wire if there is local earthing otherwise the line wires may get overheated and it may cause fire hence proper earthing safe as from firing the next is earthing for the appliance it is essential to provide a connection for earthing an electrical appliance such as refrigerator, toaster, etc. All these appliances have their metallic cases provided with a terminal. The earth wire of the cable is connected to this terminal. When the live wire of the faulty appliance comes in direct contact with the metallic case, the appliance acquires a high potential of the live wire. If the metallic case of the appliance is properly earthed, then as soon as the live wire comes in contact with the metallic case, a heavy current flows to the earth through the earth terminal and the fuse connected in the circuit of the appliance blows off. This disconnects the appliance. Thus, the person touching on the defective appliance does not get any shock if the appliance is properly earthed. This is a symbol used to show the earthing of an appliance. Now, most often, the metallic case of the appliance is painted. The paint is provided an insulating layer on the metallic body of the appliance. So, for the proper earth connection, it is necessary to remove the paint from the body part where the connection is to be made. Next, we can move to 3-pin plug and socket. All electrical appliances are provided with a cable of 3 metallic pins in an ebonite case which is called 3-pin plug. In a 3-pin plug, the top pin is for earthing, the pin on the left is for light and the pin on the right is for neutral. The pins are split at the ends to provide a spring action so that they fit in the socket holes tightly. The earth pin is thicker and longer than other two pins. The earth pin is made long so that the earth connection is made first. This ensures the safety of the user because if the appliance is defective then as soon as the light pin gets connected the current pass to the earth and the fuse blows off. Now the earth pin is thicker so that even by mistake it cannot be inserted to the holes of light. Three pin plug is inserted to a socket in the switchboard which has three holes. The upper bigger hole in the socket is for earth connection while the hole on the right is for light and hole on the left is for neutral. When we use a 3-pin plug and socket, we have to take two precautions. 
our hands must be completely dry and the plug pin should be tightly fit in the socket. Next is color coding of wires in the cable. Each electrical appliance is provided with a three core flexible cable. The insulation on the three wires is of different colors. Red or brown, black or blue, green or yellow. In all convention of colors of insulation, red wire is for light, black is for neutral and green is for earth. But according to new international convention, brown wire is used for light, light blue wire is used for neutral and green or yellow wire is for earth. Next is high tension wires. For high voltage and high current, a special wire called high tension wire is used. A high tension wire has low resistance and large surface area. A high tension wire is made by twisting together a number of thin wires insulated from each so as to provide a large surface area. Due to the large surface area, it can radiate the heat produced more radially as compared to single thick wire. Finally, safety precautions while using electricity. Electricity has two major dangers. They are fire and electrical shock. Fire is caused when there is overheating in the line wires. To avoid this, one must use wire of current carrying capacity higher than the total current which can flow through the circuit. Now electric shock may cause due to poor insulation of wires or due to touching of appliance with wet hands or because of no earthing in the appliance. To avoid it, we should take precautions such as the insulation of the wire must be of good quality and should be checked time to time. The appliance should be never operated with wet hands and each appliance must have metallic case earth and electric appliance must be provided with proper fuse in its live wire before the appliance. Hope you all understood what I taught you today. Thank you and have a nice day.